Pulse Live from the point of Saginaw on Washington Street in beautiful downtown Durand, Michigan. First Congregational Church presents Cafe Devo, a five-minute devotion that fits seamlessly into your day with an encouraging biblical thought designed to lift your spirit and point you to Jesus Christ. Thanks for clicking the start button. God bless you. It's Sunday, June 4th, 2023, and this is another edition of Cafe Devo. Thanks for clicking the start button and spending a few minutes with me. I hope it will be a blessing to you. I'm your host, Pastor Steve Wood. Those of you who are paying attention can see off my right shoulder, Bugsy is not with me today. We have taken him to the to the uh, boarding facility already as Melanie and I prepare to head for Indiana a little later on today to be with her mom and the rest of her family. I appreciate your prayers. We've already put out information regarding that situation over the prayer chain, and we sure appreciate our church family. For our devotion thought, we turn once again to the book Truth for Life today. It was written by Pastor Alistair Begg and is copyright 2022, The Good Book Company. This is the second volume of Pastor Begg's collected devotions. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication, If God has already determined what he is going to do, then why should we bother to pray? What possible difference can prayer make? Can we change God's mind in our prayers? Probably we have all voiced those kinds of thoughts or asked those questions. We think like finite creatures because that is what we are, and we naturally project our own perception of reality onto God who is not bound by time or space. Though the Bible itself portrays God in ways that represent him with human characteristics, the full testimony of Scripture causes us to conclude that God does not change, and he does not change his mind. James puts it plainly for us. In God, there is no variation or shadow due to change. James 1.17 and the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Numbers 23, 19. So when it appears that God changes his mind, it is in actual fact circumstances or human behavior that has changed. And God is responding differently than he had done, but still entirely consistent with his character. So if God never changes his mind, and yet he repeatedly calls his people to pray, then we are led to this conclusion. In his sovereignty, God has ordained both the ends and the means to those ends. And we will not reach God's intended ends without his foreordained means. Now, if that sounds like a mystery, it is. Some things of God are just that way. Think of God's eternal ends as found in Revelation chapter 7, where John wrote, After this I looked and beheld a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Revelation 7, 9 through 10. Now, is God simply going to bring that innumerable company before his throne irrespective of anything anyone says or does? No. Otherwise, Why would Jesus have said to his followers, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest? Matthew 9, 38. In God's plans, the prayers of his people are the means by which he raises up servants who herald his word. And men and women receiving the word of God from those heralds are the God-appointed means for fulfilling his purpose from all eternity to have a people that are his very own. Ultimately, 
How the sovereign God uses the prayers of his people in his plans remains a mystery. We will not have all the answers to all our questions about prayer in this life, at least not for now. But that's okay, because we can be confident that God ordains means such as prayer for his eternal purpose. And knowing that is enough to bring us to our knees so that we might enjoy the privilege of knowing in all eternity that our prayers were used as part of his sovereign purpose to save his people. For more on this, check out the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Father, help us to trust you when we do not understand, to follow you when we can't see the end to know that you have ordained and and sanctified both the ends and the mean. Help us trust you in this, Lord, and use us. Help us to be part of your plan. Bless us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, that'll do it for us on this Sunday edition of Cafe Devo. Thanks for being with me, for clicking the start button. Before I go, I want to remind all of you to come join us at First Congregational Church today if you have not already done so. Obviously, I don't know what time it is when you click the start button, but if there's still time, come join us at 10 o'clock for worship right here at the point of Saginaw and Washington Streets in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan, as I like to say. If you can't join us in person, connect with us through the live stream. Don't forget, this is Graduate Sunday. We will be honoring the class of 2023. We have one of our own, Trevor Ritter, is a graduate of Byron High School, and we will celebrate Trevor's accomplishment with his family and his church family. And we say congratulations, Trevor. Way to go, young man. We're praying for you as you launch out into the future God has for you. For now, I'm Pastor Steve Wood signing off. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow.